بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي الأحباب from one of the important aspects of seeking knowledge in Talib al-Ilm is revising knowledge, going back to the books. And from those books which provide light and help increase your Iman and help focus you on the Sirat al-Mustaqeem is those books of the Salaf of this Ummah, Rahimahumullah Jami'an. And that when you find yourself being too harsh, go back to the books of the Salaf. Of course, first and foremost, going back to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when it comes to some of those issues that to explore some of the issues that were explored by the prior generations, it requires us going back to the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. So if you find yourself being to one extreme, too harsh, go back to the books of the Salaf. If you find yourself being too soft, go back to the books of the Salaf. And I find that personally, that by looking back into the books of the Salaf, it helps us to stay uh, focused on our priorities, which is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, wa ma khalaqtu al-jinn wa l-anzil al abudun I have not created mankind and jinn, except for the purpose of worshiping me. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said in the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, Qala ya Mu'adh, ya Mu'adh, Atadri ma haqq Allah ala ibadi, wa ma haqq ala ibadi ala Allah. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam asked Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, about what the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Oh Mu'ad, do you know the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over his servant and the right of the servant over Allah? Faqal Allah Rasulu A'lam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. Then Mu'ad, uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Haqq Allah ali badima an ya'budu wa la tushriku bi shayin. The Prophet ﷺ said, answering the question or answering uh, his own question, it was there in order to make bayan and tawdih and to make things clear for Mu'adh to give him important information to him, this very important ilm. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, the right of Allah over his servant is that he worships him and him alone. And the right over the servant over Allah Azza wa Jal, and of course this right is only uh, given by Allah and can only be enforced by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The right of the servant over Allah is that Allah will not punish him if he worships him and him alone. So if the slave, if we do our duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa tawheed, if we fully actualize worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with pure tawheed, pure monotheism, then uh, the right that Allah has given us is that He will not punish us. And may Allah bless us to be of those who haqqa tawheed, ameen, ya rabbil alameen. So the books of the Salaf urge us to go back to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and give us a minhaj, they give us a methodology for understanding the religion. And they help us from going to the right and going to the left. Going from too extreme and going from too soft. But trying to keep the balanced middle course that the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam uh, illustrated for us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And amongst those great imams that many of the Imams of the Sunnah have praised and that has been a source, a, a, a great resource of learning the Ittaqad and making clear the Ittaqad of the Salaf of this Ummah, the creed of the Salaf of this Ummah, 
is Imam Babahari, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. One of the great Hanbali scholars, he was on the madhab of Imam Ahmed, and he was born in Baghdad and raised in Baghdad. He was a scholar in Iraq. And in some of the statements regarding Imam Babahari, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, because we want to keep this study of his book as brief as possible, but full of benefits as much as we can, to the best of our ability, but at the same time concise. And the treaties we're going to study, bi'idnillah, is called Tahdeeb Shara Sunnah Lil Babahari. This is the abridged version of Shara Sunnah or the, the creed by Imam Babahari, Rahimullah Ta'ala. So he was known as Wahua Imam Al Qudwa, Shaykh Al Hanabila, Wa Kabirihim, Fi Asrihi, Abu Muhammad Hassan ibn Ali, Ibn Khalf al Babahari, Wa Hadi Nisba il Barbahar, Wa Hia Adwiya Lati Tajlibu il al Hind. So Imam Babahari, Rahimullah Ta'ala, was from the great Hanbali scholars and from the major ones in his time. And his name, he, his kunya was Abu Muhammad, the father of Muhammad, Al Hassan Ibn Ali Ibn Khalf Al Babahari, Rahmatullahi, Rahmatin Wasiya. And the name Babahari, it came, it is associated with a place called, or uh, actually a medicine called Barbahar. So perhaps it's from Bihar, I don't know in Hind because this is a medicine which was uh, made or had come from India and he was known for whatever he was associated with Barbahar this place or this uh, which was uh, this medicine that came from uh, India and without going you can find probably in other explanations details about the great Imam, Imam Babahari. But again, I wanted this to be as brief as possible and benefits on how to, uh, a, a brief study of how to understand or one of the great books in the Creed of Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah the Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah, the Minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah, in understanding the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam, and we will use for our study. Again, we'll try to be as brief as possible, but we're going to bring benefit from Imam uh, Salib bin Fuzan, half of the Allah Taala. We'll also bring benefit from Imam. Uh, Ahmed ibn Yahya al Najmi, Rahmatullah alayhi, Rahmatan Wasiyah. Also, we will benefit from Allama uh, Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al Madhali, Hafidullah Ta'ala, as well as Sheikh uh, Al Jabri, Sheikh Ubaid Al Jabri, Hafidullah Ta'ala. And all of these are, are from our ulama of Ahl Sunnah, and they all have explanations or at least some ta'liqat on this in a very important treaties. But pr predominantly, we will focus more on probably bringing some fawaid benefits from Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan's explanation, as well as Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi, because uh, he also was very a bit more concise in his explanation, and it makes it easier for us to go in and get some of the fawaid in a short period of time. And we will also rely predominantly for our main text, uh, the book Tahdeeb Shara Sunnah Lil, Lil Babahari, and this was uh, abridged by Hamid ibn Abdulaziz ibn Atiq, Hafidhullah Ta'ala. So we will use his treatise because it's very small. And he said in the introduction, the reason he abridged it 
is he was asked by one of his students, or he was asked by uh, a brother named Mubarak, who uh, asked him to abridge Charter Sunnah. So what he did is took out some of the statements in which they were repeated statements that Imam Baba Hari uh, was repetitive in certain aspects of the treaties. So he took those out and made it more concise. He also gave the the gave it um, some title, some chapter titles, in order to uh, make clear the subject matter in which Imam Baba Hari was articulating for us to understand the creed of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to understand the creed of, uh, uh, of uh, Ahlul Sunnah Tiwil Jama'ah. So we will begin very briefly in this first, this first sitting. We're just really dealing with the introduction. And we'll read a, a few statements of some of the great Imams with regards to him. Uh, Imam Dhahabi, Rahimullah Ta'ala said, Fi Ibr, in a book called Ibr, he, he described Imam Baba Hari, Rahimullah Ta'ala, saying, Al Fiqi Al Qudwa, Shaykh Al Hanabila Bil Iraq, Qalin, Wahalin, Wahalalin, Wakan Al Hu, Sayyid Al Azim, Wahurmat Al Tam. He said that Imam Baba Hari, Rahimullah Ta'ala, was a great Fiqi. You know, in his understanding of the religion and, and you know, a great imam of the Hanabila uh, school of thought in, in jurisprudence, in the madhab of Imam Ahmed. And he was one of the great Hanabila scholars in Iraq. And he was an imam that practiced. He knew the halal and the haram. He, you know, had understanding of the religion and knew the, the fiqh and the conditions. And... The also he was uh, upright and righteous in his statements, and he was also very strong and determined, and strong in ilm. And uh, he, Imam Dhahabi praised him greatly. Uh, Imam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah Taala, said about Imam Baba Hari, rahimahullah Taala. He said, "Al Alam Al Zahid, Al Fatih." Al-Wa'idh Wa kana shadeedan ala ahl al-bid'i wal-ma'asi Wa kana kabir al-qadr Yu'adhamuhu al-khas wal-am Hatta innuhu fi zamanihi kana mizanin lil-sunni min al-mubtadi'a A very high praise by, by Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah Ta'ala Who said that Imam Bahari was a major alam major scholar, and he was uh, an aesthetic, you know, very, not one who's indulged in the dunya, in this worldly life, you know, uh, his heart was not attached to this worldly life, a zahid, he was a fiqhi, you know, he had fiqh and understanding of the religion, and the jurisprudence, and the principles of the religion, and he was also a great, uh, he was great at art articulating and a great preacher, and likewise, Imam Baba Hari was very stern with the people of innovation and the sinners, very stern upon them. And he was well respected by the general people and specific people. And, in, and so much so to the extent that in his time he was considered a scale to measure the Sunni and distinguish the Sunni from the Mubtadi'a, from the person who innovated. So Imam Baba Hari had great, great, immense status, was a great Imam of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a great Imam of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, and he had insight and he was pious and he was also not compromising with regards to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very strong and stern on Ahlul Bid'ah. Those are just some of the things 
that give us a very brief understanding about Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala. And we'll start just with the first uh, ibara very quickly. So that way we can keep our treaties brief and it gives us time to go back and, and really prepare and make our lessons hopefully worth listening to and hopefully a benefit to us in this life as well as the hereafter. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Qali Imam Babahari, Rahimullah Ta'ali, Rahmatul Ali, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Qali Imam Babahari, Rahimullah Ta'ala. So we're going to rely on the text, the abridged text, which is a little bit different. It's slightly, it's shorter, obviously, because it's abridged than the original text. And we'll use this for our study, and then we'll highlight benefits from the ulama by looking to their, into their various shurahat and uh, try to take out some benefits that we can hopefully understand and practice. So Imam Babahari said, Rahimullah ta'ala, Al-Amr bilazum al-Sunnah. So he began his treaties, or the first that perhaps is not actually from the text that actually that title, that chapter title, is from uh, the the one who abridged it, Hamid uh, bin Atiq, Hafidhullah Ta'ala. And he began describing the first section of Imam Babahari's uh, book as Al-Amr bi Lazum al-Sunnah. He gave it that title. The reason he gave it that title, because the contents that will follow this title in the beginning of Imam Babahari's treaties are commanding to the uh, commanding and illustrating the importance of following the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and emphasizing the jama' uh, of being one solid group, the group of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama' of Firqa al Najia, the safe sect, as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam mentioned when he salawatu Rabbi wa salam wa alayhi said, "La tazal taifatun min ummati zahirin al haq." حتى يأتيهم أمر اللهم على ذلك وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, "There won't cease to be a group from my nation uh, that is victorious uh, until the day of judgment." And there's other narrations: "لا يضرهم ولا من خالفهم ولا من خذلهم حتى تقوم الساعة." In another narration. The Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith in Sahih Muslim that no one will harm them even if they differ with them and even if they, uh, you know, they differ and they, you know, disrespect them or they're, they're, they're not in accordance with them until the Day of Judgment. So Ahlul Sunnah will remain. They will remain until Allah removes the believers from the earth. There will always be a taifa. There will always be a group practicing the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu pro properly. So don't say all the Muslims aren't practicing properly or this and this and this. Yes, we all have shortcomings. We all have sins. But alhamd, ahl sunnah mawjood. Ahl sunnah is present. And you'll find them everywhere. They're not restricted to a place. They're not restricted to a tribe. They're not restricted to a race of people. It's not with the Arabs. It's not with the African Americans. It's not with the whites. It's not with these ones. But Ahlul Sunnah, you'll find Ahlul Sunnah, you'll find someone from Ahlul Sunnah in China. You'll find a Filipino from Ahlul Sunnah. You'll find an Ethiopian from Ahlul Sunnah. You'll find Ikhwan from Yemen. You'll find brothers from New York, brothers from Pakistan, brothers from wherever, and sisters from wherever, based upon united, based upon the creed of worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal alone, the creed of Ahlul Sunnah, Tiwul Jama'ah, all the principles of the deen, and based upon the fiqh of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, based upon the minhaj of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that this is what unites them. This is what makes them ahl sunnah. It's their belief and their creed and their practice. That's what makes them distinguishes the Sunni from the mutadia. And may Allah bless us to be from ahl sunnah and those people who He's pleased with. Amin. So he began. He said, "Al amr bi lazum al sunnah." And then he said, he began with Imam Babahari's statement, Alhamdulillah ladi hadana lil-Islam wa manna alayna bihi wa akhrajana fi khair al-ummah fa nas'alahu a tawfiq lima yuhibbu wa yarda 
والحف مما يقرا ويسخط so he began by saying all praises for Allah who guided us to Islam and blessed us with it and placed us in the best nation the nation of the believers the nation of the Muslims and so we ask him to grant us that we keep to that which he loves and is pleased with and avoid that which he hates and which angers him and that's a beautiful dua and may Allah accept that from us and may Allah bless us with ikhlas with the bad al-sunnah because the two conditions for us to have any of our deeds accepted and this is what we want we want to have our deeds accepted we want to enter Jannah the reason we study books like this these books of the Salaf and, and so forth is because we want to come closer to Allah that's the point it's not about uh, you know raising yourself in the eyes of the people or what any other uh, uh, these, these worldly affairs but in fact it should be a means to bring us closer to Allah so let's make your intention now that you are going to if you're going to listen to this dars, then it's going to be for the sake of Allah to benefit yourself. And I will do the same to make my intention every time we begin to sit. Let's make our intention for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because those two, de those two uh, conditions, shartan, to have our deeds accepted by Allah azza wa jalla. The first is ikhlas lillah, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it's an act of worship, that we do it for the sake of Allah, that you refute ahl bid'ah for the sake of Allah. That you give charity for the sake of Allah, that you make hajj for the sake of Allah, that you pray for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Allah Azza wa Jal. All those things are for Allah. And the other condition in order to have any of your deeds accepted is that it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. And Imam Babahari will expound this and we will talk about this more in detail as we get into the treaties. And so we'll stop there. And we ask that Allah, the Almighty, accepts our good and forgive our evil and put this on our scale of good deeds and forgive us of our many shortcomings. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with abad. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.